I just wanted to take this time out to say hi. I haven't done a video in forever and a lot has happened. <laughs> so long story short, you guys will be hearing from me more. Um, I'm doing a whole new sort of look and feel of my channel. I'm sort of changing some of the content. I'm going to be focusing more on things like lifestyle, culture, motivation, um, sort of my life in France as an American. And if you hadn't noticed, I got married. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I got married. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have been in a relationship with a lovely Portuguese man who I met in Paris. I know it's such a love story. Um, for about two years now and we got married a month ago. Um, so I'll be talking about that. I'll be talking about an American marrying a Portuguese. I'll be talking about two people from two different cultures living in a foreign country. Um, the craziness that just is my life. Um, <laughs> But today, that's not what we're here to talk about. I had to get on here and defend Harry and Meghan, the Sussexes. The, su la 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 the Sussexes. Sorry, I'm American, so saying Sussex and Sussexes and Yorkshire isn't as easy for me. Um, anyway, I wanted to get on here and I felt absolutely compelled to stick up for these two people. They released a documentary on Netflix. You pro guys probably saw it. Netflix. <laughs> so redneck. Um, on Netflix. Um, you guys probably saw that very recently. And um, before this, I really hadn't done... I hope you guys like my makeup today also. I know it's like all out, but since it's close to Christmas, I want it to be a little fun. Um... Sorry, I'm looking at my computer. The thing is, is that I felt so compelled to talk to these, talk, talk, talk up and speak up for these people who are just getting trashed by the media for what I really don't see as any valid sort of reason. Um, me, personally, I, I think that I'm a little bit of an exception for the general American public or whatever, or at least a little bit of a different representation of an opinion because there's this international element I mean I've lived in Europe for the past five years I mean I've lived in France not in the UK but I also lived in, in London for six months and um, beyond that I just am a total anglophile if that even exists like since undergraduate I mean, I studied art history, and a lot of art history came from the United Kingdom, came from Ireland, came from Scotland. So I've always been fascinated with, like, their castles, their medieval castles, and, um, you know, the Tudor period, and the Victorians. Like, I've always had such a fascination for that stuff, and even modern things, you know, just like you know, a lot of the economy and the stock market, I mean, the booming stuff that's happening in the world today is coming right out of London. Um, you know, their accent. <laughs> I just wish, I wish that I had an English accent. Sometimes I speak to my husband and I'm just like, I'm so sorry that I got the lesser accent. But you know what? That's in the eyes of the beholder. We actually got married in Gibraltar. I speak more on this in another video. I got all of the scoop for you guys. Don't worry. I'll tell you all about the wedding and everything. But we actually got married in a courthouse ceremony in Gibraltar, which is a part of the United Kingdom. I'm going to get to Harry and Meghan. I promise. Um, <laughs> um, Gibraltar is a part of the United Kingdom, but it's like kind of isolated or whatever. But anyway, like this is all just to say... Because I see this a lot on Reddit, I see this a lot online, you know, just people saying, oh, well, you don't know the whole situation, you being American, you know, you don't know the whole situation. Like, since you're American, you don't live in the UK, like, you don't really have any insight into this. Okay, fair do, fair do. But, um, I do think me personally, I have a... I'm, I'm a an, an, uh, self-identified Anglophile. I have a love for the United Kingdom. 
I even have a love for the monarchy. My mom, like all the Black Lives Letter Matter people that I know, will probably persecute me for this. But I think the monarchy should stay because clearly you people don't know how to operate without it. So just keep it, you know, like just keep it. <laughs> um, but I feel like I have a unique perspective on this. And I just feel like the UK is, is sticking itself, it, its foot in its mouth. And I feel like America is and always has been the younger sibling to the United Kingdom. We get it. You're older, <laughs> you know, you're more established, whatever. We get it. But sometimes you need little sister, you need little brother to come in and tell you, look, man, you're coming across as a huge douchebag. So let me just help you out, okay? And that is what I'm here for today. So, Harry and Meghan. And I'm going to try to keep this short, you know. Um, basically, if you don't know the background of it, Harry, I'm not going to go much into the background because this is more for people. I'm talking to people who know about this and who have chosen to take a stance on hating them. But I'm also specifically speaking towards the people who are like me, who want to stick up for them, you know? So this is for both of the, the camps. But more specifically, I want to speak to all the hate that they've been receiving. And I think it's absolutely unwarranted. It's absolutely catastrophic. And it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable in 2022, 23, whatever you want to call it. Um, we shouldn't be doing this in this day and age. Okay, so I feel like Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson should have taught us a lesson. Um, the guy who was gunned down in the UK, I'm so sorry that I can't remember his name, but much like the situation with George Floyd, you know, like, I think it was at a bus station, a bus stop, um, and it's, it's like the perpetrators who carried out this act are just now coming to light, um, Brexit, and I'm gonna, I'm, I know I'm just kind of like spewing all of this out here, I'm gonna put it together in a second, Brexit, you know, what happened with Brexit? To my understanding, from the research that I've done, <laughs> for some people, it was an advantageous move, okay? For some people, there were advantages to it. Cool. But from what I have seen, Brexit from the administrative end, Boris Johnson clearly didn't think this through. And it was like, they just pushed it, pushed it, pushed it, pushed it before they really knew what the consequences would be for people of all socioeconomic backgrounds and kind of a dick move, kind of just xenophobic, you know, kind of just like, hey, I don't care, get out of my country. And now, you know, people are suffering. People are having to choose between heat and food in the UK. I'm not talking about the celebrities. I'm not talking about the, the Real Housewives of Cheshire type people. I'm talking about the everyday man. I'm talking about the people who work on the fishing docks. You know, I'm talking about the small business owners. From what research I've done, Brexit has hurt them so, so, so much. Um, there's so many sanctions and things that they need to go through to actually do business with the other European, well, not, the, I can't even say the other European Union countries, European Union countries because there weren't all of these policies that were put into place beforehand. You know, there weren't, things that were thought of beforehand, you know, it was just, I feel that Brexit now was a very rushed thing. And I think that the United Kingdom is starting to feel the hurt of that. And I think behind that, you know what, before I get to that, I feel that Brexit and Harry and Meghan, the hate that they received is connected. So let me just go back and then I'll tell you what I think. So, Harry and Meghan, I really didn't get into them much until, like, maybe a year ago, you know? Like, from the time that they got together, that they got married, I was just like, oh, my, I was taken aback. I was like, wow, that's great. You know, have a person from a mixed race background, from a different ethnicity, a different nationality, entering into the royal family. I thought that was all positive. Great. But, of course, that didn't blind me to... What I, just, what I said is like the younger younger sibling to the UK, something that we can see about the UK 
that maybe the UK can't necessarily see about itself. Same way, works the same way. I feel like the UK and, the, and America have a special relationship. The UK can see some things about the United States where we can just improve. And they're like, hey, you know, from a diplomatic standpoint, we just want to help you out. Maybe you could take these measures and look less like a douchebag, you know. So this is this is the world view. You know, we're working together, people of different backgrounds, people of different motivations, different goals, different objectives, you know, coming together to coexist. That's really what it comes down to at the end of the day and thrive, not just coexist, but thrive. So I came into this not knowing much about the situation with Harry and Meghan. Okay, but upon going online and just casually searching them, just, oh, what's Harry and Meghan up to? And, and I will tell you, the Oprah interview, I am all for that because that's the truth. And that's illuminating things that are in the dark, you know, and things that are in the dark need to come to the surface. And... I don't think it's always right the way that you go about doing it. I'm not saying that the Oprah interview and abandoning their titles was necessarily the right way to go about all of this. But take a look at what these people are dragged through. And take a look at the things that the people say online about these people. The lies that they spread. And, you know, people like Piers Morgan... It's like they don't see how they come across as really out of touch, as really not an anti-racist. Because to be an anti-racist, you have to be actively trying to tear down prejudice, xenophobia, racism. And I just don't see him a part of that conversation. And he can say all he wants, oh, give me valid proof of how uh, the institution is uh, prejudice, is racist. It's like Harry said in the documentary, if you don't see it, if, I, if you don't understand it at this point, I cannot help you. Now, that's a little bit pessimistic. I think that people who hear people talking about things like systemic racism, uh, institutional racism, prejudice, sexism, and they just are the ones who roll their eyes and say, oh, do we have to have this conversation again? Like, where's, where's the black and white proof? I don't necessarily think that these are bad people. Um, I just think that these are uncomfortable conversations for everyone. And maybe we're not being as sensitive as we need to be to the subject and to our fellow human beings, okay? And... I don't need to go into the however many of people who have encountered depression and succumbed to that very recently. I mean, there's Aaron Carter. There is um, Anthony Bourdain. There is Anne Heche. What happened with her? You know, we could go on and on and on through the list of people who have battled something as serious as depression, as suicidal thoughts, as feeling very low in yourself, having the world antagonize them and them not make it. We've seen that story over and over and over again. And yet we still can't find compassion in our hearts to just listen to someone you know, and not necessarily listen to them to have to say anything, but to just listen to them and to hear them out. And to hear that Harry and Meghan had gotten death threats, that they had gotten um, all of this hate, you know, people saying she deserved having a miscarriage through all of this stress that she endured. People saying that they should just suck it up and take it. Comparing her to Kate in so many ways, subtle and unsubtle, and basically putting Kate as, you know, Mother Teresa and Meghan Markle as Mrs. Compton, you know, Z-list actor who doesn't even deserve a bit of human decency. 
it's really disgusting. It's really disgusting. And for people in Britain to think that race and xenophobia is not encapsulated and just completely, the stuff is not completely immersed and wrapped in racism and xenophobia, then you're absolutely delusional. You're absolutely delusional. You can say, oh no, I, I don't like her because of this. I don't like her because of that. I don't like her because of this. I don't like her because of that. Just get over yourself, okay? It's delusional to think that media, you know, these media sources like the Daily Mail and Piers Morgan and all these people who have just beaten her down to the most minute level where she's saying, there's a problem, like something's wrong. This is not what I was expecting to get into with just finding the person that I love. Something's wrong. Like I'm having suicidal thoughts. I'm very unhappy. I feel like I can't be myself. Something's wrong. And even when she's saying something's wrong, people are still just hammering into her. Hammering into Harry, you know? And it doesn't just stop with Megan. It doesn't just stop with Megan. It continues with Harry. Because just from being associated with this woman, just for loving her, okay? Just for loving her in the way, and I am sorry for this because sympathize with King Charles and I can sympathize with Camilla they loved each other and that love was forbidden okay and I can sympathize with that but Harry is just loving Megan in the way that Charles never loved Diana never stuck up for her okay that's all that Harry's doing and for the media and for people to seriously sit here with their nasty ass comments and drive apart Harry and his brother. I just, to me, these are the things that let me know that evil is very, very much alive and well and real. And it really exists in the world. Because these people have been susceptible to some very, very dark thinking. And I don't think they're coming from up there. Um... Harry is just loving her in the way that Charles didn't love Diana. And I think that he was very right to protect his family. I think that I, I see absolutely nothing wrong with them moving to the United States of America and protecting themselves. And I say thank God for Tyler Perry. Thank God for all of the people who surrounded themselves around these, these poor people and protected them. And to hear people saying now, oh, well, I thought you said you were going to go away and live in silence. I thought you wanted privacy. Why, why are you doing this? Are you serious? Just are you serious? Is that really the way that you look at the world as black and white as that? Or can you really just be honest with yourself and just be like, I just don't like them. You know, I even have respect for that when I'm going and looking at all this hate on Reddit or whatever it is. I actually have respect for people who are just like, oh, dude, I just don't like them. Like, I just don't like their annoying faces. Okay, at least that, that's just something that's like deep down in your gut that you're just like, I don't like it. Okay, but when you're going in and you're trying to defend all of these reasons to why they're bad and your opinion is right and it's just surrounding idiotic things and that you can't see behind here You've got a loving husband and a loving wife. A husband who is trying to protect the woman he loves, the mother of his children, and keep them in safety. Not only physically, with the physical person, because there were death threats, okay? Not only the physical person that he's trying to protect, she's going through mental anguish. He's going through mental anguish. These people are experiencing utter depression and trauma from this and you're saying that them going and speaking about their experiences to Oprah okay I get it it's Oprah but still them going to speak about their experiences for them to feel better 
for them to speak up for the people like me, brown person over here who has experienced systemic racism my whole life, for all of my ancestors, and not to mention all the other brown, disabled, LGBTQ plus people who have experienced being bigoted against. You're saying that our experience is invalid. Oh no, it's not about that. It's not about that at all. It's because of this, 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 and this, and that. Get real, the United K uh, Kingdom. UK, get real. It's time for you to get real. And I even looked at here in France, in my home, I looked at French emissions, and they're basically saying the same thing that I'm seeing for most American emissions, that they are in support of Harry and Meghan. Because they see that they've experienced something horrendous, something traumatic, and they're just trying to pick their lives back up. They're just trying to put the pieces back together while also being the activists that they are and doing some good for the world. I, I really would like to see what good for the world all of these trolls online, uh, the Piers Morgans, the Daily Mails, the Sky News. I really would like to see what good for the world they are doing. And maybe the Sky Newses and the Piers Morgans are doing something, okay? Because they have the resources to do something. Maybe they're supporting great charities. But the people who are just disparaging them online, I really would like to see what they're doing for the world. Because here you have Harry and Meghan, people who are actually giving to the impoverished, actually trying to change things for social justice, actually trying to speak up for the underserved and the people who are shunned away from society. But I know somebody else who did that. And they got... Executed. <laughs> I feel like there is a lot of whitewashing in the UK. And uh, I've actually gotten into some of these online battles with some of these people on Reddit, on... Um, Quora, Quora, however you say it. And I say, hey, I see two people who love each other, who are trying to shine a light on something that is wrong. I see two people who are speaking up for the less represented. I see two people who have goodwill intentions. I don't see two people who are not genuine. I really don't. And if you do see two people who are not genuine, it's just like, what is your definition of genuine? I don't know. Um, I think the UK has a problem with whitewashing. Um, like I said, I'm in support of the monarchy. I think that for the UK, that is something that is necessary for them. Now, the Commonwealth... I think some reforms need to happen. And I think that the people of the Commonwealth need to be talked to and considered. Do they want to keep the monarchy? If they do, it should be kept. If they don't, I think something should be considered or another compromise should be found. But I think, you know, as a black American, when I go online and I listen to the voices of my fellow African descendants who are living over in the UK, as black British people, they feel, oh, it makes you want to cry. They feel completely unheard. They feel completely just looked over. And in the history books, you know, they're not speaking about the tons of black British generals who won you know, battles and things, who did uh, amazing diplomatic things in the UK. And I guarantee you, they exist, buddy. The British media is really not giving, um, what do I want to say, a balanced voice to the black British public. Um... The monarchy doesn't want to acknowledge the travesties that it's done 
all over the world, all throughout history. Not all throughout history, but at least for the past thousand years. And they just don't want to acknowledge it. They don't, they, they don't want to acknowledge some of the hurts that they've caused. And America's in the same boat in some ways. But in many ways, I think America is more progressive, okay? And I think that America wants, generally as, as a whole, to work towards a more honest future. But what I see from the UK is that it's like Harry and Meghan, they disturb this whole... interconnectedness of all of it they disturb the whole foundation of this thing and it's not them who disturbed it but it's what they represent new fresh progressive moving towards something new moving towards a new um outlook on things you know integration approach openness freshness i think that that idea to the monarchy sometimes is very, very threatening. Um, and I think British people, many of them, especially the people who are ardent monarchists, when they see that, they want to defend their home. It's just like wanting to defend a mother, you know? And that's how I look at the monarchy as a mother, a mothering figure who um, can sometimes be brutal but all in all who brings peace and calm and so when she's threatened they want to protect it but guys i guarantee you going after harry and megan is not the way to protect your ideals and your values you know i was looking at these videos from ah oh, what's her name jada franson <sighs> i didn't know about jada franson I didn't know about Jada Franson um, until around the time that this documentary was that for Harry and Meghan was coming out. And I just noticed when this documentary for Harry and Meghan was coming out, you know, I noticed that people were really not excited about it and, and saying, oh, this is going to expose the monarchy and this is going to ruin the monarchy and they're gonna and and that it wasn't about that at all it was two people coming in telling them how they felt like they experienced racism how they felt like they experienced prejudice how they explained that they were having trauma and depression okay and suicidal thoughts and the monarchy just said get over it this is what two people these two people were talking about but i feel like the media and all these people just fed these lies and so the British public reacted with outrage. And I think that happens a lot. Um, I just think it's time for Britain to have a very intimate conversation with itself and ask themselves, are we being a part of the change? Or are we being a part of the impediment that's keeping us back from change. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Lots of exciting things coming, like I said, so we won't get bogged down into the mess for too long. Um, but the UK, I, I love you guys as your um, Anglophone, you know, sister. And I'm wishing the best for you all. Um, but we've seen this story before many, many times where people have said that something's wrong. Please be there for me. We need your help. Please have compassion. And we don't have compassion. And a year or two or three or four or five or ten or whatever, those people turn up dead. You know? Those people overdose. Those people take their own lives. It, it's like you would think we would have learned our lesson by now. So, um, yeah, my, my advice for the royal family, I'm very disappointed in William 
and I'm very disappointed in King Charles as well. I think that King Charles, I can make a little bit of... I can kind of give him a little slack because obviously the guy is probably dealing with a lot right now. But, um... For William to abandon his brother, you know, to, to try and drive a wedge between his brother and the person that he loves, that is a very, very, very touchy territory to tread on. And you guys are missing out. You guys are missing out. Uh, because Lilibet and Archie, they're growing up. Harry and Meghan and their whole family, their children, they're exploring new bounds and leaps and territories and growing. And you're not there to see it. And I think, personally, Queen Elizabeth II would have had a problem with that because to her, family was very, very important. And we know from her relationship with King Edward VIII that she even she had forgiveness in her heart you know and she still saw the value of family so I think you guys are missing out and over in America we'll gladly take uh, Prince Harry and we'll gladly keep Meghan so I think you guys are missing out and I think that something really should be done um, on the royal family's end, whether it's reaching out to Harry and Meghan and moving a step forward, and that does not have to be in the public light. But I do also think the UK has a responsibility to sort of filter its media outlets for some semblance of truth, some semblance of humanity and compassion. Like, on the personal level, the royal family has a duty to be there for these two wounded, wounded birds. That's the way I see them as two very, very wounded birds, but strong. Strong enough to continue to try and fight for themselves. And I think from the social perspective, something has got to be done about the hate propaganda around the UK media. It's just out of control. So that's what I've gotten from that. Um, tell me what you guys think in the comments. You know, if you're going to bring hate here, I might respond, I might not. But tell me what you think, because I really am curious. Other interesting news that I'll be talking about on my channel, I'll be telling you guys how to travel on a budget. We are whizzes at it. I'm going to talk about things like work, how to deal with toxic co-workers and bosses. I had a heck of a zinger this year. Um, ended up quitting my job of two years. Got another job in 15 seconds after that. Had a crazy boss. Um, got over that. Feeling really good. Uh, we're going to talk about things like relationships. You know, uh, the good and the bad that comes with being married especially being a young married millennial who we're becoming like extinct creatures, you know. So there's lots of good stuff coming up on the channel. I really would love you guys to subscribe, stay a while, um, because this is just a journey with me and life is a journey and we should be sharing and enjoying with one another as we go through this.